everybody, and happy 4th of July. I hope you are excited to have um, a fabulous holiday weekend, and I pray that it is a safe one. I'm Kathleen Hawkins, your proud president and founder of WOMTECH, and I am so excited. Are you ready to have an educational, inspirational, motivational, um, powerful WOMTECH Live today? Because we've got a lot of people that, that are here today that are going to share with us how to um, protect, uh, protect our homes, protect ourselves, and protect our parents. And I, you know, there's nothing more important that we can do than to keep safe, keep safe over this holiday weekend, keep safe in everything you do to prosper and build your business and to make a difference in the lives of others. You know, speaking of making a difference in the lives of others, I am so excited to tell you that just this year, um, actually just this month, just the past few weeks, um, we are making a difference and impacting the lives of children who have been abused um, or abandoned through no fault of their own that are aging out of foster care. This last week, I am so proud to say that along with several WOMTECH members, the WOMTECH Foundation donated $3,000 to children aging out of foster care um, to help give them the tools and the essentials and the items that they need to improve their life, to make a difference, to break a cycle of victimization and, and really change their lives. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting our foundation. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for making a difference. And for all of you that are out there watching, thank you for collecting jeans. Jeans? Why do we need jeans? You know, it's so important to feel comfortable in the jeans that you're born in, feel comfortable with who you are. And we issued a challenge starting May 15th through August 15th that the chapter that collects the most jeans use jeans and I don't care what shape they're in if the jeans are ugly if they're ripped if they're torn it doesn't matter we donate them to an organization in Miami that makes um, blankets for children born with AIDS so take out take a look and clean out your closet you know all those jeans you no longer fit in because you've lost weight of course because the summer is here clean out your closet clean out your kids closets and donate them to your chapter and we will make sure they get to use to a good place to a child out of in foster care or somebody in an abused women's shelter you know somebody that needs to feel comfortable in the genes that they were born with and who they are um, the chapter that collects the most genes the chapter that collects the most genes throughout the United States of America is going to have the ability to not only make a difference in their community, but to offer four six-month memberships to their chapter, complimentary, plus everybody in the chapter will win a prize. So I challenge you, and I know some of you are kicking butt and taking names and collecting genes, of course, and making a difference in your community. You have till August 15th. See, the problem is, is Goodwill can't keep these in stock. Salvation Army, they don't collect genes. So it's, it's hard for a foster family or an abused women's shelter or a homeless shelter to actually give people this staple item, this thing that every child needs to go back to school with, that everybody needs to own. And if you've bought a pair of jeans recently, I know that you know they're not cheap. So um, clean out your closet, make a difference in your community, and help us change the world one person at a time. So speaking of changing the world one person at a time, our first guest that's here today, I am so excited to introduce because, um, you know, some of us that are out there, you know, we may be, you may be young young we're all young in our own heart but some of us that are out there um, really need to understand the importance of making a difference with who they are and and what they do but you also have parents that need to understand that when you're dealing with parents and they're aging my mom god bless her soul she is a vibrant amazing wonderful woman and I love her with all my heart and soul She's 73, and she's so 73 and so sassy and young. I know that, but there's going to be decisions that I'm going to have to be faced with. You know, as um, we continue to move forward and as you continue to look at different things that are happening in your life, this person's going to help us understand that it's not about um, who you are and it's not about what situation your parents in are in. It's about being proactive by protecting those other people, being pro proactive by making proactive decisions before, before you're dealt that emergency, before it's too late before you're faced with a challenge and you don't know what to do you don't know where to turn don't wait till it's too late part of protecting yourself part of protecting your home part of protecting your parents is by being proactive and thinking about the things that you need to think about before it's too late. So now I'm ready to introduce my next guest and I am so excited to have her here and joining us today. She is from the awesome Winter Park chapter. Veronica is with the Nurse Next Door. Thank you so much, Veronica, for being Thank here you. today. It's a pleasure to have you here and, and you were a real trooper jumping in and helping out. Tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, Nurse Next Door is a home care service provider. It's our pleasure, it's our passion to go into the home and help take care of your parents or whoever may be in your home with need. We do everything from transportation, medica medication management, all the way through skilled nursing. 
Okay, I think that's awesome. And you know, I think the major point that we need to drive home today is, is it's, it's obvious, like when my father was diagnosed with cancer, I remember being in a situation where I was like, oh, what do we do? And I remember our little minds going through, and my father even going through, well, I can just get a small apartment and I can try and find a job where I can work on my computer. Because you don't know when you're diagnosed with something like that, are you gonna be around for a month? Or are you gonna be around for a year? Are you gonna be around forever? You know, we, you don't know. And I remember the first thing was, Let, let's do that. And then the second thing was, maybe that's not realistic. Maybe he's, he's sick, too sick to live on his own and live independently. Now, in your organization, do they live on their own or do, they, do you come to them like, or do, are they in an assisted living facility? No, our goal is to keep them in their home as long as possible, independent with a high quality of life. So we come into your home and assist with the, minimally what they need to continue their life as they know it. So if they are unable to drive suddenly, well, then we step in and we can do that to make sure they still get to those things that they like to do, go to the park, go grocery shopping, go play bunco, but they're unable to get there. So we're going to help them do that. You know, I think it's interesting because especially with what I witnessed my dad going through, I think that mentally when they get to the point where they realize they, they, they are totally codependent on other people, they start to lose hope. So how, what do you notice about them mentally? Well, mentally you want to make sure, are they remembering to take their medications? Are they withdrawing socially? Maybe signs of depression going on. Um, and you want to make sure that you notice these signs of ahead of time and be proactive so that we don't end up in a situation where we have to go to the hospital. So that's what we're trying to avoid. So as soon as you start to notice those things, then you want to start calling in for somebody to come in and just evaluate the situation. OK, awesome. Honey, I think it's time for you to get assistance, because I'm mentally, I'm noticing you're forgetting things. <laughs> just shout out to you. Happy birthday, honey. No, you're fine. You're perfectly fine. Um, so when you're dealing with people and you start to notice that mentally that there's a challenge, and I think that is important, because I think all too often people wait, wait until they get dementia or wait until they get Alzheimer's or they get diagnosed with something, when there's got to be little signs along the way that if they had some assistance, they're, they're again being proactive to the situation. So mm -hmm. other than the, those mental concerns, what are some of the physical concerns that someone might have when well, you're dealing with an elderly parent? Well, for physically, you want to remember, are they able to feed themselves? Or is, that stop, is their appetite going away and they're not eating or drinking as enough fluids? Are they able to dress themselves? and to toilet themselves. Some, or they stop taking a bath. Sometimes you'll notice that they're not taking a bath. It's not because they don't want to, but they're not able to physically get in the tub like they used to be. Okay, that makes so much sense. And you know, I, th I would imagine, or I would speculate that a lot of baby boomers that are out there um, probably have a, a little bit more problem with losing independence than maybe back in the days, because it was such a unique generation. And they probably do want to continue. This is my space. This is my stuff. This is what I worked on. And I don't want to lose it. You know, I don't want to give it up. So it, right. it makes them very vulnerable to, to face those challenges. That's right. And that's why we want to keep them in the home as long as they can. You know, baby boomers, they're not going to put up with it. They're not going to go away easily. This is not what they want. They want to stay in their environment with their family, their loved ones, where they're, com where they're comfortable, with their things. Mm -hmm. So this is the most important thing, and that's where we want to come in, and we want to help you do that. And I would guess that even if it's just a matter of coming in and cooking every now and then, um, or cleaning for them, or whatever, I would speculate that there are ways that they can have somebody come in that doesn't make it feel as though I'm in an assisted living facility now. And there's nothing wrong with assisted living facilities. You know, they, they, they fulfill a need for many people Absolutely. all the time. But if you're not at that point yet, it may be easier for them to ask for help if it's more like someone just assisting them. Do you know what Correct. I mean? It's no different than, hey, I want, a, I want a maid. I want someone to cook for me. You know, <laughs> I want that assistance too. And I don't have to be 70 years old or whatever to, to, to say I need that or to feel less of myself because I have that. That's right. And we have personal assistants. So they come in and they just make sure they're safe. The home is safe that their day-to-day -day activities, they're, have, they're doing them safely. It's not about coming in there and being a caregiver and, and taking away any of their independence and bossing them around. It's about being their personal assistant. What do they need help with? Maybe they just need help sorting through their bills. Maybe they do just want a, a good meal, their fabulous meal that they used to can cook that they can't do anymore. It might be why they're not eating. So instead of us going in there and cooking the meal, well, why won't we get that person involved? And you show me how to cook your favorite meal. 
Yeah, I think that's awesome. And you know, I can tell you that my, my mother, um, I talked to you about her, she's a vibrant, vivacious woman. And um, even her herself at 73 years old is now taking care of someone that's I think 84 years old. So I can imagine that a lot of your personal assistants may be people assisting somebody else that may not be too much older than them themselves. And that's the best way because there's a better connection. Sometimes it's hard for a millennia and a baby boomer to connect. So having a senior take care of another senior, it's, it's their pleasure to do that. And there's a, it's, a, it's a bonding situation. Absolutely. Now, if you have a parent that's at risk, um, I hear all the time about people falling and hurting themselves. Well, we all hear, help, I've fallen and I can't get up. You know, you all hear that face. <laughs> if you have somebody that's at risk and they don't know, you, like what are some of the signs that you need to look for? What are some of the safety precautions that people can put in place for somebody that may be at risk for a fall to make sure that that doesn't happen or to make sure that they're safe? There's a lot of things in your home that you might not consider a fall risk, and they might not be a fall risk for you and I, but for somebody losing a little bit of mobility, it is. Those beautiful throw rugs, they've got to go. You, you and I can trip over those occasionally. Mm -hmm. Your bathtubs, there's no handles to get out of, or they're too high. Those are the types of things that you want to look for. Now, I know that with your company, you mainly service the Orange, Osceola, Seminole, Volusia County areas. Um, Lake County, I think you said? Yeah, Lake County, too. So if you're servicing those main areas here in Central Florida, but there's somebody that's watching. I know Kiki's watching. She's our next guest um, from Texas. Or there's someone watching in Maryland. Stacey Gillis may be watching in Maryland. Or Tawny Cash may be watching in Atlanta. If there's somebody that's out there watching from a distance, um, but they have a parent that they feel needs protection or needs help, are you able to help them? Is there anything that you can do for those people? Absolutely, it's my pleasure to do that. It's about the community, it's about keeping people safe. So if you have a parent or a loved one that lives in another state, you can call me, I'll do the legwork for you. That's no charge at all. It's about safety and doing for our fellow WOMTEC also, it's about keeping their families safe. I love that. I love that. And you know what I can tell you is that um, it truly is the WOMTEC Goga spirit. I hear your heart when you say that. And I can tell you you're passionate and you love your job because it really is about like saying if somebody's got someone they love, if we can help them love that person and take care of that person and fulfill their needs, it's the pay it forward concept. It's the go give spirit. It's, it's you know, what you do for the lives of others will always come back to you. That's just how life works. And, and I, I love and I hear your heart. Now for those people that are in Orange, Seminole, Volusia or Lake County in Florida, what is it that you can do for them? If they just wanna see, okay, I wanna, I wanna just talk to you. I wanna be prepared should I need to be proactive. And I just wanna know some of the th signs I should be looking for so I know when to say, Jeff, it's time. You need help. No. So I know when to say what it is that I need to do and what it is that I'm looking for. What can you do for them? Well, that is a community service that we give. It's free of charge. You can come in and we'll do a free consult, a free safety evaluation of your home, and answer any questions that you might have. Okay, I love that. That's awesome. So it's a free consultation. Now, how can they get in touch with you if they want to get in touch with you today? You can go to our website, nursenextdoor.com, or our Facebook. It's facebook.com slash um, nursenextdoor Orlando. Okay, so like her Facebook page, and she will connect back with you, which is super exciting, and, and make sure that your parents stay protected. Thank you so much for being on the show You're today. Welcome. I greatly appreciate it. Thank and um, thank you for being a WOMTEC member. I'm so excited about that. If there's ever anything I can do for you, let me know, and I'm sure we will continue to be in touch so you. you're my pleasure so for those of you that um, were watching the segment today we still have two more amazing guests that we're gonna have on the show but what I want to close with with protecting your parents is this remember it's about being proactive so if you have a family member or if you know anybody that may be a little bit older you know maybe um, let's say 60 to 125 it doesn't matter what it is and they're you're starting to notice some changes or they're starting to make some differences or you just want to know like I would never have known get rid of the th throw rugs you know those are little things that that we often don't think about and we really want to keep our, our parents just as safe as we want to keep our kids safe and and I love the idea that they can be a companion and even if they are older but they may be retired and they may be looking to supplement their income or make a little bit of extra money one of the great things that you can take into mind or consideration is exactly what she said the seniors often make the best caretakers for other seniors because they can become friends they can share ideas they can create alliances and they can continue to feel young and feel alive live together. So I'm super excited about that. Speaking of feeling alive, are you ready to roar? Um, our last Confident Women Conference was Rev Up and Roar 
And I know NASCAR is coming around. So in the spirit of NASCAR, I want to remind you that in um, April of 2015, we will be doing our next National WOMTEC Confident Woman Conference. I am currently looking for one main stage sponsor that wants to stand out above and beyond everybody else. I, I will send you information if you're interested in finding out more about that. I'm also looking for vendors that want to participate. It is company exclusive. So we only have one person from each company that is able to participate as a vendor. And we are also looking for breakout session speakers. If you have an educational topic that you would like to share with our members and you want a free opportunity to get you, you and your business in front of an audience um, that can not only empower you, but educate them, I want to hear from you today. So whether you're a member or a non-member, I want to connect with you. And if you want to know what the Confident Woman Conference is about, get ready to roar. Are you ready? I want to see you at the next Confident Woman Conference. I want you there. It is an amazing event. And if you're a man that's watching the show, yes, we always need a few good men at all of our events. I know it takes a confident man to be around a bunch of confident women, but gain your confidence and come to the Confident Women Conference and be there. Participate, um, educate, motivate, inspire, empower, and make a difference not only in your life, but in your business. So I'm so excited about our next guest because she is doing exactly all of the things that I just said. Kiki is um, a director from the Woodlands, Texas chapter, and happy birthday, Kiki, because I know her birthday is next month. Kiki is an amazing woman. She has broken WOMTEC barriers across the USA. Kiki um, has the largest chapter in WOMTEC history. She is inspiring and motivating over 100 women and a few good men, and I can tell you that she is making a difference in her community. She is changing lives and taking names and doing it one person at a time. Kiki, thank you so much for being here today. Tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do. Hi everybody, I'm Kiki Colmarianos. I am with, uh, I am a residential realtor with uh, Keller Williams, the Woodlands and Magnolia here in the Woodlands area in uh, Texas. I have a seven year old son. I have a 10 and a half year old dog. We moved to the Woodlands three, almost three years ago in August from uh, Florida. Uh, I specialize in residential real estate and I am also a certified distressed property expert even though there aren't that many here in the Texas area. I used to do a lot of short sales uh, when I was in Florida back uh, in 2008 all the way up to 2011. I think that's awesome and you know I want to tell you that Kiki is a woman that absolutely goes after what she wants and she gets it. Um, I can tell you when she called me after leaving West Palm Beach and she was moving to the Woodlands Texas chapter I can tell you that she actually called me and said I'm starting this chapter and it wasn't an interview it was I'm doing this this is where I'm doing this this is when I'm doing this and I'm like okay I guess you're doing this and I'm so blessed and so glad that you had that conviction and that determination to make yourself an authoritative figure in your community and, and you not only practice you can not only deal with real estate Transactions and transactions in Texas. You can also do it in Florida, right? Is there any? Is there anywhere else? Yes, I am also a broker in the Tampa Bay area. I have an office. I have a buyer's agent still out there. We're still uh, doing transactions. So if you know anybody in that area, we'll be more than happy to help you. That is awesome. Well, today we're going to focus on protecting your property. And the main point of this conversation is going to be if you're buying a home, some of the things to look out for. But if you are, if you have a home, some of the things that you need to do to make sure your property is appraised as, how, as high as it can possibly be um, to protect your assets too, which is really important. So Kiki, why don't you give us a few pointers on protecting um, it? What would you look for if you're purchasing a home or if somebody knows somebody that's purchasing a home, what would be some of the things that you would want to do to make the wisest investment? 
Well, the first uh, thing that you really have to look at is are you buying at the right price? That's where a, a licensed realtor comes handy. You know, I know a lot of people, especially when the market is hot, and I've been in a really hot market in Florida back in 2004, five, six. People would do it by themselves. You know, you would see a lot of for sale by owners. People would go out there and negotiate on their own. But really, a, a, a licensed realtor has information that the average person doesn't. We have access to the multiple listing service. We have access to the uh, property appraisers side. We can give you a true estimate of how much is worth. You know, we deal with professional bankers, mortgage brokers that deal on their own with professional appraisers. We utilize professional inspectors, because at the end of the day, there is more to a house than signing the dotted line. That's, you know, I'm so glad that you said that. That is so very important. And, you know, I know that especially in taking a look at the past eight years and how the real estate market has changed and how things have um, just been dramatic, you know, and different, and people have had to make some really tough decisions. I, I have learned through the years because realtors do make the best WOMTEC directors. And, and I've really learned the difference between a hobby realtor or a career professional realtor and the amount of knowledge and the amount of information that they have that they can share to you. But you should really find a real estate professional that you don't only know, like, and trust, but you know, like, and trust that they are knowledgeable because that's a key that makes a big difference. And you know, when you're dealing with real estate professionals, I think that it's important to take a look at um, what is it that their knowledge is, who is it that they have contacts with, and how that they can better assist and help you because that is is critical in making a difference. And I think that you made, made said something correct. I have a mortgage person that's in my chapter, for example, and she will come to you and say, let's say you lost your house during the recession and you need to make a difference. She'll come to you and say, um, you know, what is it that I can do? How can I help you? What are your goals? And what do you have to do financially? What do you have to do credit wise to get everything put in place? So finding people that are knowledgeable, but also finding people that are willing to assist you, get out of what you experienced maybe in the last three years or prepare you for what you're going to experience in the future, I think is critical. Wouldn't you agree? I totally agree, and that's why you know you see a lot of times, even when you deal with different realtors, there are realtors who specialize in selling the house, they are listing agents, and they are buyer's agents. So depending, and there are you know realtors who do 50-50, but if you deal with a specific person, let's say with a buyer's agent, if you are a first time home buyer, I would highly recommend that you hire a buyer's agent. They usually work under a bigger team and that's what they specialize in, but they would be the best resource for a spe especially a brand new home buyer who don't know where to start and where to finish is with the whole thing. You know, the realtor, the buyer's agent will take you step by step throughout the process. They will make sure that every step has been clearly communicated and it will, they will make the process easy and they will make sure that you are getting the best deal. They will make sure you are getting a home warranty, which is very important. They will make sure they have contingencies that you can get out of the contract if you need to. There are so many little things that a buyer's agent can help you with, you know, whether you are a first time home buyer or a more experienced one. But 100% I recommend a buyer's agent for, for a first time home buyer. Well, Kiki, how would, you, how would you say it would be best for somebody to find a buyer's agent? Like, how, what are some of the things that they look for and how do they locate one? Well, um, a buyer's agent, most most of the times, they work under a bigger team. So if you have uh, a small brokerage, the broker usually has realtors who work under them who specifically deal with buyers. So if you go out and find a team, chances are that there is at least one qualified uh, buyer's agent in that team. Uh, there is an abbreviation, and that's another thing, you know, 
when you hire a realtor, you know, all these little letters that we have under our names are not a test of your knowledge of the alphabet. You know, it means that we have gotten some uh, special training and we have obtained some uh, uh, real estate uh, um, accreditation. So the ABR stands for the Accredited Buyer's Representative. So if you are looking for a buyer's agent, look for a realtor who has that designation. A, like in Apple, B, like in Boy, R, like in Robert. Okay, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing because, you know, I know a lot of people don't know what the acronym stand for next to somebody's name and they don't make a whole lot of sense or mean a whole lot, but they are really important and you need to make sure that you do your research and, and Google it so it's actually an acronym that is um, important and not just something somebody made up or put next to their name for no reason. So thank you. Now, Kiki, what are some of the, um, the things that you would encourage people to look for if they are a homeowner and they may move one day, they may downsize one day, you know, whatever it may be, how do we increase the value of our home? Well, and that's very important. You know, a lot of people, let's say in Florida or in Texas, the weather is really hot and they want to add a pool to a house, right? Adding a pool to a house, depending on your zip code, can cost you anywhere between 30 to over. All right, stay tuned. We're going to try and get Kiki back in just a moment. But in the meantime, we're going to be prepared to go on to our next guest. But before we do, um, Kiki will be back with you via Skype from the Woodlands with a tropical storm coming our way. You never know what's going to happen when you're airing live. So hopefully we'll be able to get Kiki back soon and we'll wrap up the segment with her. Um, but in the me meantime, one of the things that I want to mention is, um, you know, when you are with WOMTEC, there are many things that you get. There are many benefits of being a WOMTEC member. You get category exclusive networking to your organization. You get coaching and training and consulting by me on an ongoing basis. Um, you get access to a lot of member benefits and, and different things like that. There are so many different things that, that you have access to as a member. But one of the things that I wanted to mention is right now, whether you're a member or a non-member, if you're a member, I don't care when you joined or when you're renewal is now is time to renew because you can renew and say we want to encourage our WOMTEC warriors and we want to make sure that we get you off in, in the best direction and if you do so using the coupon code that can be given to you by your director or that you can find on WOMTEC Facebook if you do so you will have the ability of saving 20% on your membership that takes your annual membership down to $240 if you've recently joined or recently renewed or your expiration isn't coming up for months no problem we just extend it out from there we have members that that are very smart, very wise, and that have their memberships going till 2015, 2016, because they know you can increase your profit by lowering your expenses and by making more money. So this coupon code does end July 4th, so you wanna make sure to log in and take advantage of it now. If you're a non-member and you're watching this segment, what are you waiting for? You're missing out. There's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't take advantage of this opportunity. Where are you? What can you do for $28 a month or less if you take advantage of this coupon code where you have masterminding, education, training opportunities, a, a free video presentation like we're doing today to help increase your search engine and advertise and brand your business, category exclusive opportunity to your business, and ongoing consulting and training on a monthly basis. You can't get that anywhere for $25 a month or less. So log into WOMTech.com, click join, and become a member of us today. I do believe our fabulous team tells me that Kiki's back on. So woohoo, girlfriend, thank you so very much for doing that. I'm so glad. Sorry for the delay for everybody else. Kiki, continue what you were saying on what does it take to, what are some of the things that we should look for when increasing our, our, our property worth and value? Yeah, so I was saying, like, if you are in a state like Florida or Texas, they're both very hot states, and people, the first thing that they want to add a pool, right? We love having a pool at our backyard. Depending on your zip code, a pool can cost you anywhere between thirty to over 100000 Are you going to get that money back when you resell your house? Absolutely not. A pool will probably give you back between five to 10,000. So if you want to invest the money in it, that's fine. It's for your own pleasure. Don't expect to get that investment back when you are reselling. It doesn't matter how much money you have. The, you might have the Playboy pool in your backyard. People don't care. You know, you have made use of that. Here are some things that I believe every home homeowner home should consider investing in. 
the first thing that I, I think there is replacing your exterior door. It's a minor investment, an average door, depending on the size of your entrance, is around $1,200, and that can give you back almost 73% of your initial investment. Then another one that I would definitely encourage people to do is remodel your kitchen. So, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to go out and get the most expensive kitchen. The mid, a, a mid-range kitchen remodeling will probably cost you around 20,000, but when it comes back to reselling, you will probably get anywhere between 70 to 72% of your investment, of your 20,000. Another one that most people don't look don't think about is the garage door. How many times do you walk up to a house and the garage door is dented, it's halfway up, halfway down, you know, it's all about the curb appeal. So invest into a garage door. The investment is around 1500 probably, depending on how big your, uh, your door is, but you can get back almost 70% of that when it comes time to, to resell. Another one that is really good is your deck. Whether you have a pool at your backyard or not, invest in a nice deck. People love it, it gives curb appeal, you can sit out, you can put a nice patio out there. So that's definitely another thing that I would definitely um, advise people to do. And lastly, if you own an older home, be it, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, you should probably start thinking about investing in replacing your windows so they are energy efficient. You know, it's amazing in the summer months how much money you waste in electricity because your windows are not insulated. Right. So that's a great investment, and you can probably get back 65% of your initial investment plus you get the benefit of paying less money for your uh, electric bill every month. You know, coming from someone that spends $800 a month on my electric bill, I think that's an awesome, awesome um, <laughs> suggestion. So I, I love it, Kiki. So I know that you all, even though you're all the way in the Woodlands, Texas, you do surf, you can help people in the Texas area as well as in Florida, um, and in the Tampa Bay area especially, but all over the state of Florida as well. So one of the things that I wanted to mention is if anybody's watching, whether you're in Florida or Texas or anywhere in the United States of America, Kiki wants to connect with you. She wants to get to know you, and she's a powerhouse of a woman, so, she, so you really should connect and get to know her. Um, Kiki has offered to send, if you own a home, she will send you some additional tips on 10 ways to increase the value of your property. If you don't own a home and you um, wanna own a home, even if you don't think you can get your credit to do it, even if you don't think you're ready to do it, connect with Kiki as well because she will send you the tips on um, how to purchase a property and things to look for to make the best and wisest decision. You know, it never hurts to make a connection. It never hurts to make a friend, um, especially one as smart as Kiki and as knowledgeable as she is. So Kiki, thank you again from the bottom of my heart for sharing with us today. Tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. Well, you can reach me via email. My email is kiki at kikisellsteam.com or you can connect with me on Facebook and it's Kiki Realty, R-E-A-Y. Or, you know, you can like our One Tech The Woodlands Facebook page and I can connect with you that way. <laughs> we, we want more likes. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And if you if you had a hard time or if she cut out because it is via Skype, I'm hearing what she said. One of the easiest ways to connect with Kiki is just go to WOMTech.com, go to the member directory, search by name, and type in K-I-K-I, -K -I, and she will pop up. You can connect with her via Facebook, LinkedIn, her email address, her website, whatever it takes. And speaking of connecting with, I do have to say I am so proud of the fabulous D. Tui who connected with Kiki. She's a very bright woman. They both are. And even though they're both in the real estate profession, they got the power of WOMTECH and how it's not about direct competition. It's about getting to know other people and making a difference and using strategic partnerships and alliances and working together from state to state. And D. Tui, who I believe is watching us now, shout out to you, girlfriend, you know I love you, actually flew out to the Woodlands, Texas to, to go to one of Kiki's meetings, to have dinner with her and her husband, and to talk about how they can work together. See, the most successful members and the most successful business owners are the ones that get out of their own little space and their own little function and their own 
own little head and they think bigger and wiser and, and, and deeper and they grow when they build alliances nationwide with companies that are similar to theirs and with companies that are different. So you can help lift each other up and empower each other and take you to the next level. So once again, Kiki, thank you so very much for being with us today. Thank you everybody who is watching because I know via Skype thank isn't you. the same as being in person, but I love you and happy, happy, happy 4th of July, but most of all, thank happy you. birthday, Kiki. Have a great uh, holiday, weekend, holiday weekend. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I'll be in touch soon. Take care and God bless. Okay, the next person that we're going to have here is going to talk about protecting yourself. And I love this segment. I personally have purchased products from this person, and I'm excited to tell you what I've purchased and why I purchased them. Um, but she's going to talk to us about, she teaches gun safety classes. You know, I feel like Charlie's Angels when, when I do something like that. She teaches gun safety classes, but she also sells sev several safety products. So this is about being proactive. You know, you can't wait until your child is about to be kidnapped. Um, and even if they have a cell phone and you think they're safe, you know, they, they the person could take the cell phone away or throw throw it somewhere or whatever. But more importantly, think about how long does it take for 911 to respond to the call? She's already gone. She's already in the trunk of the car or in the backseat of the car or whatever it may be. You know, if somebody, if you're, if you're out exercising and something happens to you and you call 911 or you scream, how long does it take for somebody to get to you before something bad happens? It's about being proactive, being proactive with the home, being proactive with your resale, being proactive with your parents, but most of all, being proactive with yourself. Your business does not matter. Your health does not matter if something happens to you. You. So um, I'm here to introduce the fabulous Andy, who is a proud member of one of my chapters. So rock on, yay. I'm so excited about that. Thank and you. You're very welcome. And you're working Wom Tech because you visited a lot of chapters. You're a mm -hmm. very bright woman. Tell everybody who you are and a little bit about what you do. Okay. Uh, my name is Andy Tolbert. And like Kathleen was saying, I teach safety, but I teach safety as kind of a whole package. Um, I do teach gun safety for those people that are interested in learning how to shoot. I teach ladies only classes as well as mixed male and female classes. But I don't want to push something onto you that you're not interested in. So if you're not interested in learning about carrying a gun or learning how to shoot a gun, we have all kinds of other classes and products and tips and techniques for you as well. That's awesome. Kiki, I think you need to get her out to Texas. Let's figure out a way to make it happen because I have a feeling there's probably a few Texans that are out there that could get excited about a gun <laughs> safety class. Just guessing, not, not, not being stereotypical, but just guessing. Um, Andy, tell everybody a little bit about what, what are some of the statistics or, or what are some of the important things um, that criminals look for that we could better prepare ourselves to protect ourselves? Okay. Well, a really interesting study, somebody actually went into the prisons and interviewed a bunch of inmates, specifically rapists, and they said, what did you look for in a victim? How did you decide it's going to be that one, not that one today? And some of their answers were really kind of shocking. So let's see if you know some of these. Oh, no. Okay. Put me on the spot. Put me on the spot. Okay. What time of day do most rapes and attempted rapes occur? What time of day do most rapes and attempted rapes occur? I and if anybody that watches TV, we all know this answer, right? Okay. I would say during the day. Isn't it, Daylight? isn't it at night? At don't night. go out alone at night. Don't go out at night. See, I'm going to fake. I, I don't do well in test on the spot. Okay, okay. at night. Don't go out at night. Okay, that makes wrong. sense. Night okay. time's absolutely wrong. Oh, okay. 5 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. is the number one time. Just when I run, right? Perfect. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, exactly. go ahead. So we'll talk about that, <laughs> but that's a whole other story. Uh, where do you think the number one location for a rape abduction is? My guess would be a park, maybe a public mm -hmm. park. Mm -hmm. No? Grocery store parking lot. Grocery store parking lot is very it's interesting. the number okay. one location. I, I think there's probably a few reasons for that. When we're at the grocery store, we're coming out, we probably are fumbling with our keys in the so one I'm hand. Very distracted. And the groceries in the other and pushing a cart and maybe on the phone and we're just not paying attention. And in, in the morning, maybe we haven't had our coffee yet. We're not all the way coherent. Or we've had a whole lot more than coffee. No, sorry. <laughs> just kidding. Um, the grocery really store, I am very distracted. I, I mm -hmm. usually am, especially because my car is usually overwhelming and I don't know where I'm putting groceries. And I've often thought like I'll throw my wallet or my purse on the front seat as I'm loading things. So yep. that makes a whole lot of sense. Thank yep. you. So for it's the that. exact opposite of where we think. We think, oh, I'm out here at 11 o'clock at night. I need to be extra on guard. And that's actually, I'm not saying don't be, <laughs> don't misinterpret, but that's not when we really need to be the most careful. Wow. We need to be careful all the time. Absolutely. What are some other things that we should take into consideration that we might not be aware of? Well, one thing that I thought was really interesting that came out of these interviews is only about 2% of these inmates carried a weapon when they were trying to commit their crime. So how did they do it? Like, what was just, it's just forcefulness or Intimidation, fearfulness? Intimidation, fearfulness. Uh, usually, you know, we have small female, a large male. There's the size factor. 
But the reason that most of them do not have a weapon, and this is the one thing about our criminal justice system, the criminals know it better than us non-criminal people. Mm -hmm. The sentencing for rape with a weapon can be as much as 15 to 20 years, whereas rape without a weapon can be as little as three years. Oh my goodness. So the weapon is what makes the difference in what they're sentenced with. Wow, wow. They know that, so they don't have a weapon. So the good news is, if you have any kind of weapon at all, you ha now have the upper hand on them because they're not expecting it. Okay, so what would you recommend if there's a woman, if, I know you recommend, you, you teach gun safety classes, mm -hmm. and, and I know that you, there's a way to have a concealed weapon without having a holster on your hip, like back in the old days or whatever. What, are, what would you recommend for a woman who said, you know what, I'm open to it, I'm open to gun safety, I, I would like to carry concealed weapons so I don't, I don't, so I have protection in case of an emergency, what would you recommend? Okay. Well, the first thing is find out what your state requires for the actual concealed license. And in some states it's a license, some it's a permit. That's kind of a, a technicality. There's going to be some minimal training standards to get your license. That is not enough. If you're actually going to carry, I recommend taking ongoing advanced trainings. I still attend trainings, usually once every month or every other month. Besides all the ones I'm teaching, I'm out there trying to learn new skills as well. So you've got to be, the old story of, you know, you never forget how to ride a bike, mm -hmm. that's baloney. Because I didn't ride a bike for like 20 years and I tried to get on one and I was like, I used to do this, really? <laughs> so you cannot just take a class and expect that 10 years down the road you're going to be prepared for something. So ongoing training. As far as options to carry it, there's on the body and there's off the body. A lot of women think of a purse, mm -hmm. carrying it in their purse. If they're going to, it needs to be a special purse that's designed to carry a handgun. Otherwise, you're going to be fumbling in. It's turned itself around. You're not going to grab it right when you really need it. So right. get one that's made for it. But that is not the recommended method because what if they take my purse? Right. Now they have my weapon and me. Right. And so, it's not their weapon, so I'm sure there's a legal loophole or something right. around that scenario. Right. So on the body carry is the best. There's lots of options. There's inside the waistband where it actually tucks in your belt in the waistband of your pants. There's all kinds of cool corset holsters and thigh holsters. You can get as sexy as you want, ladies. Giddy up, Big Daddy. You'd probably there, like that, Jeff. There right? is I'm going to be packing heat. No, just there are some awesome options out there. But um, I actually am carrying right now. And I'm in what I would say tight-fitting jeans, just a nice tight-fitting tank top, a nice tight-fitting jacket. And even if you're going out in the evening, there are still carry options. So where do you think I'm carrying right now? I ask, you need to ask them a question because I already know the answer to that. So. Veronica, did you see where she was carrying? I did. I've you did. Cheating. You've, oh, been cheating. We were cheating. You've been cheating. You've been cheating. Okay. We were cheating. I, you know, I would have normally have guessed either on your ankle mm -hmm. or I would have normally guessed in your in your waist. But mm -hmm. I was shocked when you when you revealed to us where you were carrying. So okay. um, you can, don't have to reveal it. I'm, I'm not <laughs> going to literally reveal, but we'll kind of figuratively reveal. I'm carrying what's called a flashbang holster, and it actually sits right here, tucked underneath the bottom band of your bra. And you just pull your shirt up, which is the flash part, and then you basically, it's right there, flash bang. And honestly, this sounds really funny, but the flashing motion is going to distract them. They're going to be like, whoa, I'm attacking you, and all of a sudden you're pulling your shirt up, what's going on? And in defense training, that split second advantage of your distracting them with the flashing part could give you the upper hand in this altercation. So I'm carrying right. There. I think that's awesome. I think that's great. I'd worry about shooting my foot, but I think that that's fantastic. No, I know that there's training for that and safety for that, which is important. Um, <laughs> I know that you had some alarming statistics that we might not realize, and I would love for you to share because I, I think that sometimes, you know, we think it's not going to happen to me, it's going to happen to somebody other than me, or we might not realize how frequently it happens. It doesn't mm -hmm. happen in my neighborhood, you know. And I know that just this last, I think last week, a, a little a teenager was abducted that they still haven't been able to find. And I'm sure there are other situations that don't make it that far to the media that happen every single day. So yep. what are some in interesting statistics that you would like to share with us? Well, by the way, Kiki, I do realtor safety classes as well because realtors put themselves in the right there in the line of danger every day. Okay. They take strangers into homes, in their car, people they don't know. I think that's, okay, so Kiki, yeah. now you really need to get her to Texas <laughs> just to keep your community safe, just Absolutely. to keep your realtor friends safe. That's awesome. So the FBI has a website called the uh, FBI Crime Clock, and what it does is it kind of counts down how many crimes are happening. 
So in the hour that we've been here together today on Womtech Live, there have been two murders, seven forcible rapes, 30 robberies, 100 aggravated assaults, which means with some type of a weapon, 180 burglaries, and 60 car thefts. Wow. I know. That's it's huge. really, and unfortunately, I get a lot of calls from women after something's happened. Oh, I got robbed two weeks ago. I need to buy a pepper spray. And I'm like, yeah, you should have called me 2.1 two weeks, weeks, weeks exactly. ago, and we wouldn't be having this conversation. So being proactive, and I know that I, I mentioned that I've purchased some things from Andy, and, and I know that there's a lot of people that are out there that travel, and, and those of you that know me know I travel a lot. Tanya and I frequently stay in hotels as we're doing conferences around the world and around um, especially the United States, and, and one of the things that you have is you have a cool little thing that I purchased for you that attaches to the hotel room door. Mm -hmm. So because there are ways, and, and let me tell you something, just recently we were at a hotel, and it, ha it was locked, it had the top lock on it, and um, we had adjoining rooms and somebody shut the bedroom of our adjoining rooms and my son was locked in the other room and we couldn't get it into it because the door was locked and the top lock was on. And security came in, they came up and they have a credit card trick that they know how to slide in that door and pop open that top lock and they were able to get in the room like that. So mm -hmm. you need to be cautious that even if you think you're safe because you have that, you, you need to be aware. So what are some of the things, what, what is the thing that I purchased for you for when I travel in hotels? So I don't have the attachment that you're talking about, but what this is is basically a personal alarm. The good thing about this is a lot of high schools will not allow pepper sprays or stun guns or anything for students. So this is something they can take. And I'm gonna hold it well away from our microphone. Basically when the pin is pulled, it's a super duper loud alarm. We do not wanna blow your eardrums out. And it has another attachment that I call tweezers. Mm -hmm. And basically the tweezers go in the door frame and if the tweezers open, like if somebody opens your door, the alarm goes off. Okay. And I have had somebody walk into my hotel room before, down in the Keys at 1130 at night. But luckily, my husband and I were still up watching TV. If we had been asleep with all the lights off and somebody walked in, it could have been a completely different outcome. But right. since we were awake, we're like, oh, that's weird. Get out. Right. Especially if they had been drinking and it was late at night and they crawled into bed with you. <laughs> you know, who knows yeah. what could have happened. I, I love the fact that you just showed that because I purchased that for my kids, too. For no other reason than um, when they, if, if for whatever reason we get tied up, especially if school's happening and we lose track of time, it's only like a, ha a quarter of a mile to the end of the road where the bus stop is. But there have been a couple occasions where Jeff or I wasn't able to meet the kids at the bus and they end up walking home mm -hmm. by themselves. I want to know that if someone pulls over, starts asking questions, it's going to be okay. So I've trained them to pull that and I've trained all my neighbors because we have a very close community here. I've trained all my neighbors to, if you hear that noise, go outside because there may be a problem with one of my children. I've also trained them that you only pull it if there's actually a problem, which is important. But it gives me a little bit of comfort knowing that if there is a problem, at least get on my radar and you know get outside mm -hmm. to make sure everything's okay. Because it, trust me, it's loud. It's definitely loud. Now, I, I mentioned that I run in the morning and I know I've purchased a product for you for when I run because you know one day it was kind of dreary. It was like a little eerie outside. There weren't a whole lot of people out because it wasn't a bright, sunshiny day. And um, I thought, oh my goodness, I'm a little scared. Like I'm nervous for the first time ever when I was running because anything could have happened to me and there's enough trees around that I could have been raped. Something could have happened to me. Um, so you sold me this fabulous product to use when I run. If you know a runner out there or a walker out there, this may make a great birthday present or a holiday gift or something like that. Tell us about this product. So this is our jogger pepper spray. And basically it's a Lycra glove, so it's nice and comfortable. I mean, you can't even, once you're running, you don't even remember it's there and the pepper spray is attached right in the middle. So you're out running, you don't need to worry about gripping something, you don't need to worry about reaching for something. If you need it, you literally just close your hand, pepper spray is lined up, and sorry. Okay, that's okay. So <laughs> without demonstrating on you, because <laughs> it is a real pepper spray, one of the biggest things is people always ask, how do you use pepper spray? Mm -hmm. And it comes out in kind of a thin stream. Mm -hmm. Think of your Windex bottle. You've got the thin stream or you've got the wide spray. We actually have both products, but this is a thin one and it's short, it's not much, it's very small and compact. So if I just spray it in one place and I empty the canister, I might have just missed you. Mm -hmm. So the big thing is you want to, there's a couple of different things, either do circles around the attacker's face or go ear to ear, or some people do the Z. But what you wanna do is keep it moving, because if you keep it in one place, you could have just missed with the entire canister. So you wanna keep it moving, especially if there's more than one attacker, you wanna be 
spraying back and forth between both of them. Okay. But this and is nice and convenient. And I, I love it. And in, you're right. It's, it's, and it comes in different colors. So if mm -hmm. you want to just go with black or something simple, then, then you can. Um, now, pepper spray, you mentioned that. I know I lost my pepper spray because they comp I made the mistake of taking it to the airport. Not a really good idea. Um, <laughs> so I lost my pepper spray. They confiscated it. But what you have cute little packaging for that. And who would you recommend use pepper spray? And how would you be prepared, like at the grocery store? So pepper spray, and this is mine that's on my keys, but it comes in all kinds of cute colors nowadays. The old days where you had your choice of black and pink are gone. I've got camouflage, we've got zebra, we've got There's pink and purple and blue. This is the one I carry. And literally, as I'm walking out of the store, because we already talked, grocery mm -hmm. stores are the number one place, I open it up while I'm still in the store, I make sure it's all lined up, I unlock it, because they do have a little locking mechanism, and I walk out with it in my hand. And this does not look weird. Mm -hmm. I have my keys in my hand. I'm walking to my car. It makes total sense. And if somebody did anything, psh, mm -hmm. it's ready to go. When I get in my car, since nothing's happened, right, that's my goal in life is to have no testimonials for any of my products. That's, Wouldn't that be cool? That would be awesome. So I get in my car. I lock it up. Lock the door first. That's the biggest mistake is people get in their car, and then they start fumbling with stuff, and their doors are still unlocked. And somebody can either hop in with them or pull them out. So lock the car door first, lock this down, and then drive away. Okay, I love it, I love it, I love it. Now, some of you know that we live in a neighborhood with bears, and um, when you see a really big bear, one of my neighbors just posted on Facebook the other day, she was freaking out because there was a bear that actually had went through the bathroom door into her garage. Somebody had left the bathroom door open and was in the garage and she was she was just freaking out. Like, how do you get a bear out of your garage? It's really hard. And um, how do you do it before the bear does a lot of damage in your garage mm -hmm. before wildlife patrol or wild well, not life patrol, wild fish and, game. fish and game come to get you. I, don't, I guess I should write that down because if there's a bear in my porch, <laughs> I'm not going to know who to call. I'm going to call wildlife. Um, so um, you have a product, and I wouldn't say to go out trying to attack bears, but in an emergency, you do have a product that may help. And what is that? Well, it's actually a Guard Alaska bear spray, and this has been tested on the big grizzlies that are in Alaska, and our bears here in Florida are way more mild than the grizzlies Absolutely. out there. But the biggest difference is look at the size difference in the canister, because a bear is going to need a much larger dose. And this entire can actually empties in just seven to nine seconds. So it's a very big, fast dose, because this, we're talking 400-pound bears. So you've got to have something nice and large. The nice thing about our pepper sprays, and all pepper spray on the market, not tear gas, but actual pepper spray that are made from the hot peppers, they do work on animals such as dogs. So again, if you're out jogging, it might not be a bad guy attacking us. It could be a dog. A wild dog or something. Yeah, absolutely. Or the Somebody neighbor's scared. dog exactly. that got out. Right, absolutely. I know on my bicycle, I've been chased by dogs several times. That makes sense. I bet they'd only do it once. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, now, what is that last thing that you have there? Well, we have a couple of different stun guns. And what a stun gun does, there's two different things on the market. There's a stun gun, which does it. Okay. Oh, wow. So it looks like a flashlight, then. Yep. Well, it is a flashlight, too. Okay. It's got a, you can kind of see there. It's got a flashlight. This is a cute little lipstick one. Has a keychain, nice ladylike. And what this does basically <laughs> sends out an electric charge. I that up here. <laughs> as our hair goes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And basically, when your attacker comes, the sound alone will scare a lot of them off. They are not looking for a fight. They're looking for an easy victim. It's not going to be you, OK? That's your number one goal in life, is do not look like an easy victim. So basically, wherever you can get them, you touch this to them. And have you ever unplugged like your laptop and you accidentally touch the metal? Mm -hmm. what, what happens to your body? You, Just, feel shock. you jump yeah, back. Right. Your body instinctively jumps back from that. So that's what this is going to do. It's electric. They're going to jump back. If you hold it on them longer, they actually will feel more effects and actual like loss of muscle. You know, they just they can't they can't keep attacking. Right. And if you, um, poor Tim, uh, there is a video on my YouTube of my husband Tim actually uh, being a guinea pig on this one for us. And I said, oh, I didn't think that went very well. Let's do a retake. And he's like, no, 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 no. one was enough. That's awesome. And if they wanted to see your YouTube page, what would they do? Uh, Femme Defenses. Okay, can you spell that for us? F-E-M-M-E, -M -M -E, defenses, okay. plural with an S on the end. Okay. But the, the stun guns come in all different shapes and sizes. This is a cute, another one that goes on your keychain. They pretty much all have some type of a flashlight. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see here. And I like you guys seeing that charge. Can you see that? 
Okay. <laughs> and again, just like we talked about with the pepper spray, I can have this in my hand, ready to go with my keys, just walking out of Walmart, and nobody knows because it just looks like I have any keys in my hand. This one I really like because it has a built-in charger, so there's no cords to lose. It's just kind of, can you see there? Right, absolutely. It's just built right in because I lose cords all the time. And then if you've got a guy in your life, or uh, Kiki, this is the one all my realtors love, this is actually just a nice, really heavy-duty flashlight. It looks like a flashlight, absolutely. Well, it, because it is, it is one. It is a flashlight. It is a flashlight. I'm yep. afraid I'm going to do it. Okay. So up one notch is the flashlight. Okay, there's the flashlight. Oh, now you're on strobe, which we oh. didn't even talk about. Strobe, That's actually, cool. if you shine that in their eyes, it actually disorients them. So basically, it's a super bright flashlight. You can kind of, wah, don't shine it in your eyes. But it's also a stun gun built right into the head of it. So... Um, for the man in your life, they mm -hmm. love this. Or if you go out at night walking the dogs, you can actually put in a little holster right on your belt so it's nice and convenient. To and you know, it's stuff. pretty it's it's pretty solid. So mm -hmm. that one right there, I think, I always have the fear that I'm gonna have to get out of my car in an emergency, but that's so strong that that might even help you break a window or something like that. Well, so absolutely. you can use a safety device, but it could be something that you can store in your car. Right, we have one in each of our cars because if your car ever goes in the water, which for some reason here in Central Florida seems to happen all the time, uh, all of our power windows don't work and you can't get out of your car. So you could actually use the end of this to break a window to get out. That's awesome. I think I might need to order one of those too. Um, well, thank you so much. You've shared a ton of information. If somebody wanted to get in touch with you, they can go to your website mm -hmm. or they can go to your Facebook page. And I know you're offering a special right now. Mm -hmm. So if they, what do they have to do to get the special? Well, go to my webpage, which is femdefenses.com and F-E-M-M-E defenses.com and any pepper spray or stun guns that you see in there will do 15% off with the coupon code WOMTECH LIVE okay. for the month of July. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. And I also know that you're going to give one lucky winner a $25 gift certificate. Mm -hmm. So what did they have to do in order to get that gift certificate? Go to my Facebook page, which okay. again is just facebook.com slash femdefenses. I also have a page specifically for the gun training information, which is strong defenses. So if you're, more, if you're interested in both sides, definitely I, I post all kinds of great stories, articles, training tips, uh, videos. It's about time for Tim to let me stun him with some of my new products I've picked up. <laughs> he won't let me do the pepper spray yet. <laughs> he, he keeps arguing on that one because we have friends that have done that and they do not like it. That's funny. Oh, you must have a wonderful husband. I can't wait to meet him someday. <laughs> well, Andy, thank you so much for being here. And again, whether it's Veronica, Kiki, or Andy, if you have any questions for them or like the information that they shared, all you have to do is go to WOMTech.com, log into the member directory, do a search for Veronica, do a search for Andy, A-N-D-Y, mm -hmm. um, and do a search for Kiki, and you can connect with these women view, via the member directory. Whether you're a WOMTech member or not, you can connect using the WOMTech member directory. So thank you so much, everybody, for being here today. Next month's show is going to be awesome, too. So in the meantime, I hope you have a safe and happy 4th of July. I hope you're having a fun summer. And remember, keep your life in balance. Keep your faith first, your family second, and your career third. Know that it's okay to spend some time with your kids this summer. It's okay to enjoy the 4th of July holiday. So unplug, check out, and have a good time. But most of all, be safe. Pr continue to protect yourself your assets, and your parents and your children. Thanks, God bless. I appreciate you being here today. See you next month.